If you ever struggled with ChatGPT giving you false or outdated information, also known as hallucination, watch this video because OpenAI has just launched ChatGPT Search or Search GPT, and with it, you can make ChatGPT browse the web before responding, so you are guaranteed to receive up-to-date information. Hey, I'm Dave Talas, medical student turned online educator, and I run an AI education platform called Prime Master, where I teach people how to think faster at work using AI. In this video, I'm going to quickly explain how ChatGPT Search works and give you three three practical tips on using it to think faster and be more productive. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are in the ChatGPT interface and you can see this new button here that says search and it's the simple button that you can click turn off and on. And if you don't turn it on, GPT will decide if it wants to search, but if you turn it on, it will always search the web for you. So let's give it a try, explain how ChatGPT search works. And what you will see is it started searching the web and it's giving us a short response and it's showing us the uh, certain sources or citations that it's using. And you can also, let's say it's a, this Techopedia, I can open it, you can see it's a, it's a very new article and I can go through and uh, see what's going on. So this way now I use ChatGPT to search. You can also trigger it with the slash command. So with this, you can you know, just select search and that way it will also be turned on. So a little bit on how it works, OpenAI says that ChatGPT search leverages third-party search providers as well as content provided directly by our partners to provide the information users are looking for. And in their documentation, they say that um, to provide relevant responses to your questions, ChatGPT searches based on your prompts and may share disassociated search queries with third-party search providers such as Bing. So this tells me that uh, ChatGPT search uses Bing on the uh, backend. And what really happens if we go back to ChatGPT, let's say I ask it to how to make noodles. And so what it's doing is it's going to these websites and it's taking the information that it finds on the websites and basically puts it in the, at the end of the prompt. So similar to how you would manually go to these websites and copy paste everything you know, here at the end of your prompt. So it just appends it at the end of the prompt and then sends it to the language model. So it's not the language model that's doing the browsing itself, but it's been trained on how to process this uh, third party search information. Now OpenAI has shared a few use cases. So like, uh, you know, help plan a vacation for me. And uh, there are also, you know, other things like what's, what's the weather gonna be? Uh, there are also embedded widgets for weather, stocks, sports, news, and even maps. But these are not always the best use cases, in my opinion, to use uh, ChatGPT search for. What you should use it for is to find expert resources online and work based on what the experts say that you should do for your work. Now, keep in mind that just because you're browsing the internet, it doesn't mean every information out there is totally true, but this way you get a lot better sense on what kind of information ChatGPT is using because you're not relying on its training data, you are relying on external information. So let's say that I'm working on writing marketing emails. I can start ChatGPT with a simple prompt that says to act as a copywriter coach and tell me what are the most important things to focus on when writing direct response marketing emails. What I'm looking for now is I want to make sure that I have the important things here in the chat history now so we can get a little better understanding on, on what ChatGPT thinks and what, based on what it found on the web. So let's go through this real quick. It says, I should you know, understand my audience, write a compelling subject line. So these are the things that I need to focus on now, but it doesn't necessarily help me a lot to actually start writing. So what I can tell ChatGPT, I can turn off the search now and I can tell it to ask me questions that uh, if I answer fully will allow you to write high uh, performing marketing email. Right, so I'm not, I'm not asking it to make up uh, you know, a certain audience or anything like that or you know, anything about the subject line, but I'm asking it to prompt me to feed it information so I can use it for work. And now I can make sure that the kind of things that we are focusing on is actually what experts say that we should be focusing on. All right, so now just for the sake of uh, saving a little time here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask it to make up a persona 
and like a business entrepreneur persona who answers these questions. So I'm doing a little persona switching here. So the prompt I wrote is to act as the founder of an AI education membership platform who wants to keep people up to date on using AI for work and make up some answers to these questions. Now I can do something else because I can use the memory because I have used ChatGPT a lot for work. So uh, I'm gonna also ask it to use uh, your use my memory, use what you know about me to uh, be this persona. All right, and now I'm sending the prompt. So now it's telling itself uh, audience details. It, it already knows uh, a couple of things about me and the business that I'm running. So you could obviously go through it and maybe correct a few things in your follow-up prompt. And then I can say, okay, now act as a uh, marketing email. Uh, let's say act as Gary Halbert and write marketing email about launching my membership. I don't even know if it has information on my membership, but let's see. It's not like a Gary Halbert uh, style thing, but it's, it's not bad. So what I'm gonna tell it is, now I'm gonna act as a copy editor and review this content based on the guidelines in this chat. All right, so I'm referring to the things that we started talking about. Uh, actually, I made a slight mistake because I wanted to, I'm gonna pause this because I wanted to end give me feedback on how to rewrite it. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna make sure that we have a written information in tokens that it can then use to kind of rewrite the copy later on. So again, I could just keep going on and on so I could now say to act as a copywriter again and then write the email. It's actually doing it right now on its own. So this is the kind of uh, conversational use that uh, you can get a lot of work done and this is how you can use the browsing feature to make sure it is based on uh, top level uh, expert knowledge that's been shared uh, online. Another kind of obvious use case is to fact check your uh, resources and, and your information. So um, let's say that, you know, this is, a, this is a typical question that kind of fools a lot of language models to ask it uh, who was the 11th person to walk on the moon. And it, it says it was Charles Duke, but actually it was uh, uh, Gene Cernan. So now let's try again with the browsing turned on. So let's see how that works out. It says Eugene Gene Cernan was the 11th person to walk on the moon, which is actually true. We can uh, go and check Wikipedia just to make sure. It says here Cernan became the 11th human being to walk on the moon right, during the Apollo uh, 17 mission. So this way we have uh, checked the simple fact that many language models get wrong. So whenever you are going through, you know, you've written something either yourself or written it with ChatGPT or any other language model, this is one way that you can uh, go ahead and fact check the responses. And the third use case that I wanted to share is, you know, just about finding real time information. So you are, you are not limited by the language models knowledge cutoff, but with the browsing, I can ask ChatGPT to, um, you know, give me news from this week like what happened what happened in ai this week so now it's searching the web um, it actually found some interesting hungarian articles it, it knows my location that's what it says here the change also collects general location information based on your ip address and may share it with third-party search providers to improve the accuracy of results I, I think it would be good if we could just turn that off but it's not the case we have this uh, open ai enhances ChatGPT with web search article with a, with a reference to Financial Times. We have Apple launches AI optimized MacBook Pro lineup. So you can keep yourself up to date in this way. You can just get like a glance of like what's going on, make sure you don't miss any of the, of the big news. So this is another way that you can use this for browsing. And I could say, okay, based on this, write a short post for my community, planning each news slightly more detailed without overwhelm. Make sure to provide a relevant source for each news. All right, so again, now I'm, what's happening here? I kind of misunderstood my prompt because it just rewrote everything. So let's, let's work on this prompt. Yeah, I, I made a mistake here. Write short post for my community, explaining each news in a slightly more detail without overwhelm. You must write one, post per news. Let's see how that works. And this is prompt engineering in practice. Sometimes you just gotta try again and you see where it goes wrong. 
and then you can rewrite the prompt. All right, so here we have these uh, little posts. Maybe it should be a little bit longer. So I could, you know, obviously go back and, and kind of make these longer. I could ask for uh, Twitter threads or X threads to write based on this. So this way you can just use ChatGPT to basically run like a, like a news digest. And the last thing that I want to show you is that there is actually a Google Chrome extension that you can uh, install. And once you do that, you can use the top bar to prompt GPT. So I can ask how to make noodles and it's going to send that prompt to chat GPT instead of browsing Google. So now I can make sure that I'm using chat GPT and, and it's also saved in my chat history. And if I want to turn this off exclamation mark G and then you can uh, go for like how to make noodles and this will not open chat GPT. This will browse the web. So you still have that same experience. I'm going to put a link to the Chrome extension down below in this video so you can uh, download this extension and then it's just going to live here. There's nothing you need to configure. It's, it's by default using the ChatGPT account you're logged in with. If you enjoyed this video, you'd probably enjoy some of the other videos on my channel. And if you want to keep yourself up to date with AI, join our membership and become a prompt master. You can find all the links in the video description and I'll catch you in the next one. Think faster.